you have the ultimate excuse, the greatest excuse of all time. It's not my fault, it's the ghost. My grandfather's gonna lose 300,000, not because of me, because of the ghost. I'm scared, what do you want me to do? Everything is about you. The food from this kitchen could literally kill somebody. I have to go in and shut this down and figure out who the hell is responsible. Hey, Henry, John Taffer. John. Nice to meet you. Let's go in the kitchen. Hi. John, I like the coat. This is the sweat rag. Show him how many times you wipe sweat off his head, puts it down, picks up food, throws it on the grill, and your food is covered in sweat. Now, you're laughing. Is this fun for you? You should put gloves on for that. When I bring the health department in here and shut your ass down, is that going to be funny? I would be sucky. It really would, because I'm going to freaking do it. I'm going to shut you guys down. Shut the grill off. Turn it off. How long have you been here? Uh, I've been here two years. I've been managing for a little bit over a month. Do you what? know about him? I just hired him as kitchen manager not too long ago. We were kind of like... Kitchen manager? Yeah. Are you f nuts? I mean, it's, it's what I had do to do. Do you know that this guy's going to kill somebody? I'm not doing this. I'm out. <laughs> what? I'm not in charge of the kitchen, first of all. So to yell at me about the kitchen, I mean, he's yelling at the wrong person. He's yelled Miles and Henry about that. Is this going to be a joke for you? No. Because I'll walk the f out of here. How much money do you have on the line? You're right. I'm... How much? How much money? A lot of money. How much? We have to over 200 grand line. Henry, shut the f up. Is there any chance that you're going to make your money back like this? Not like this, no. It seems like a joke to him. You know, I don't, I don't know, understand why he is taking this so lightly, because this is very serious to me. Is this what you want to frickin' be? It's the best we can do right now. So you're a loser? I'm a loser. Are you? No. I'm I'll here. do it for you. I don't want to do it for him, because he's a cocky son of a bitch who thinks this is a joke, and it's not. I can do it, for sure, man. I don't want to shake your hand. I want you to look me in the face and do it. Either you will come on board and do this, or I walk out. <laughs> come with me. Yeah, let's do it. See this grill? You clean it. Right on. And fire his ass. And then I'll come in here and help you. Because I will not work with him. This is his second week in the kitchen. He's never worked in the kitchen before. He doesn't have the proper training. I'm Who didn't train him? We did not have a kitchen manager. No one trained him. OK, here's the deal. That's 24 hours. You guys clean this kitchen. Tomorrow night, either he succeeds or he fails. Agree? All right. Here I will go. train him all day tomorrow. If he doesn't try, he's gone. If you don't try, I'm gone. I, I guarantee you, we're both going to try. We'll see. Went really bad. I feel very disrespected. At the end of the day, it's all on me. I'm a, I'm a human being. I gotta I gotta live up to my expectations. John Taffer could have not messed up the kitchen so much. Right I'm pissed. If he's trying to help us out, man. That's a tough way to do it. There was no conversation there. I got three employees that are like maybe just bouncing just because of it. There's some people that are mad about their food. I'm gonna buy them some shots of like do it. She's mad about her food. Are you buying her another shot? What's she need? You were mad about your food too? Yeah, he doesn't like it. Can we get her a shot, too? Oh, I don't need one. This is really not a good way to fix our food, but let's have fun with it. Jesus I really just wanted to sit down, maybe have a glass of water. Not really a hard liquor drink. Just a little too much for me to handle, especially since I told him I was driving. Hey! How loud that owner is. It's loud and obnoxious. Shot, shot, shot! What happened? <laughs> Holy What would have happened if that horse had broken their leg? That's disgusting. <laughs> and she's laughing. She thinks this is funny. Oh God. Look at it got so scared it like pooped. Oh, he crapped on the floor. Oh. You almost fell on my table. I'm sitting there going, this ain't his first 
rodeo. We've all done this one before. Scott's rode a horse in the bar. Everybody's rode a horse in the bar. You rode a drank horse it. in the bar when you're pissed, mother This is awesome. We just saw a horse crap on the floor in a bar. I'm going in. I gotta go to work, man. I'll see you inside later. Good luck, John. As soon as I started looking at this bar, I saw drunk owners. I saw barbecue chicken. My spy couldn't even eat. And that's nothing. A horse took a crap in the middle of this bar tonight, and they didn't even clean it up. That is the worst thing I have ever seen. Either these people are morons, or they're so drunk they don't get it. I'm John Taffer. Nice Very to meet nice you. to meet you. Pleasure. Good to meet you. You, you look as good in all of your pictures as you have as in all of your. Thank All you. your shows. You seem so intoxicated. I'm surprised you know even who the hell I am, to be honest with you. Uh, to be honest Is with you, Is this the way I... you run your business, drunk like this? Um, I tried not to. Well, you're not succeeding, are you? No. Because you blew today. it tonight. I did. All right, why don't we get the three of us? Let's go inside and talk so I can learn a little bit about this place, OK? okay. Hopefully, yeah. you're sober enough to remember something for me. Hello, Donna. Hi, John. Can, can you nice see me? You. Can you even see me? Yeah, am I, I can Am see I in you. focus? You're in focus. You're in focus? OK, sit down if you can. I wasn't quite expecting you tonight, so thank you. I'm sorry. I'm here to help you guys. You're absolutely right. So I want to talk for a couple minutes and learn what's going on here, other than the fact that I have two drunk owners. Tell me the story. What happened? OK, can I tell the Please story? Please tell me the story, Thank Aaliyah. you. Um, so the bank came in and said, and said because you're in default of your property taxes, we have the right to foreclose. Because okay. we own equity. So, that puts you in default of your mortgage. Yes. Yes. OK. So now we have a bank who is in trouble. They're in trouble. Who is in trouble. You blew it, right? We did, but in the mortgage, it that. says if you don't Donna, pay your taxes, I will foreclose. Are you guys are really going to do this? I will Yes. Listen to me. Only I can tell you to shut up. That's the deal. And you can tell me to shut up, and I will listen. Thank you. How, how <laughs> in debt are you? Why am I not? How, look at me. Try to concentrate, okay? okay? How in debt Try to at least what? act. $180,000. $180,000. That's Donna. my number tonight. Donna. 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 $180,000 in debt. Yeah. Right? Do something to Have dig you yourself out. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm doing the best I can do. You're not doing I the best. I got no you money. Do. You're sitting before me drunk. How many nights a week do they drink here? I mean, every I'd night say, they're here. Every night yeah. we're here. We drink a lot. How do you feel about that? Drives me absolutely insane. That's not the best you can do. What do you want me to do? I want you to sober up. I want you to come in here tomorrow, and I want you to fight for this place with me, Scott. Yeah, I want to look in your eyes and see a partner, not somebody who's drunk. Oh my God. I you know what? Can't do I, it. Uh, I, you know. You're a man. What are you going to do about it, Scott? That's why we're asking you to help us. You're not fighting, fighting a battle. battle. You're giving up. You're drinking and giving up. Shut no. up. I understand, but I'm trying to understand where we're at. Let me talk. Okay. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> this is how we don't see eye All right, Donna, look at me. Bar. Shut up. Don't talk. I will listen to you. Don't talk. Okay. What happened try. was. This was the most frustrating conversation with a bar owner I've ever had. You can't reason with somebody when they're drunk. Yeah. He's the drunk one. I'm the drunk. I couldn't get anywhere. Aaliyah? We've been married yeah. How do you deal with this? I don't. Can I tell the Please story? Please tell me the story, Aaliyah. Thank you. So basically what happened was we didn't pay our property taxes. We couldn't come up with it. We tried. So you defaulted on your contract. Now the bank has the right to take your property away. Yeah. They were ready to close the doors and put us to auction. We filed bankruptcy the same day when is the next bankruptcy court appearance? In about 25 days. Your reputation in this town speaks for itself, doesn't it? Absolutely. Aren't you known to come here and drink every night? You're right. So if I was the bankruptcy judge, I would never believe John, in your plan. John, this John, bank is going to take this place away from you in 25 we're, we're days. Not we're stupid. I'm, I'm not a dummy, all right? You're, You're embarrassing yourself. Yeah. You're, You're acting like a drunk ass you know what? I've been fighting for this place every day because this is me. My name's on the door. And I have fought to get you here to have you save my business. But Scott, listen to me. Only want, you can. I want you to teach me how. Here's the deal, guys. Okay. Every bar owner that I Don't know who's successful know. does not drink in their bar. So, Aaliyah, they don't drink in this place. That's the Literally. deal. Absolutely. You guys have one drink. 
I walk out of here. You're Steve. Yes, sir. I'm John Taffer. Nice to meet you. Where's Brad? Is he here? Right over here, yeah. There he is. I want to sit down for a couple right. minutes. Let's talk Let's a little bit with Kevin. It's a little nerve wracking not knowing how, where things are going to go. Maybe he doesn't know it all, but maybe he does. I want to talk about integrity for a minute. Why did you copy everything from across the street? I didn't copy everything. You, you got to realize a lot of that was my ideas. But you sold it to them. I mean, you sell a business to them, you get paid, you walk away, then you try to steal everything that they bought and paid for, then they sue you, then you spend $100,000 on lawyers to protect your thievery. That's unethical. I'm not a thief. I've worked hard and I've proven myself as a good person. If I was opening this bar, there's one color that I would not make the drink, and what do you think it is? I guess green. Of course, because it's right across the street. What decision did you make? The exact one you shouldn't make. I think there's a lot of things that we do people copy off what we do, too. I mean, I'm focused on beating them. But that's yeah, not the way to do it. If you see this on the street, you think it's a hand grenade. If you see this on the street, you think it's a hand grenade. There is nothing about this cocktail that makes it unique or marketable. Really creative, huh, guys? I mean, this is really dynamic, guys. This is gonna make me a fortune. You have no individuality. That's I mean, my cup's bigger, my cup's a turtle, my cup's a different color, my cup is totally different. You're actually helping them. A green drink walks by, you know what somebody says? Oh, that's one of those hand grenades. I mean, I, don't, I, mean, I, I think it was different enough, and I, you know? This is a copy. Copies always underperform the original. That's why this drink is a piece of garbage. So I walk by here, I see no to-go sign. Up to 80% of the cocktails in this city are sold how on this street? To-go. So I have no to-go sign. I got a building that doesn't hit. You with me, guys? Right, yeah. So you're here every day. What did you hire him for? Well, to run the place. Because yeah. I'm blaming this on you. The fact is, you ain't managing. Are you a good manager? I think so. What should a beverage cost be? Well, I do have some uh, issues. I mean, uh, you don't know. What should labor cost I mean, be? I think, uh, that I couldn't tell you. All. About eight points below what you're running now, 28%. So you got a guy running your bar doesn't have a clue what the numbers add up to. It surprised me when Steve didn't know some of the numbers because he's more of the managing partner of the day-to-day -day operations. But you know, we're a partnership, so I should take some responsibility too. Right now, you're a glorified host. You shake hands, you talk to people, you work with the employees, but you don't manage the business. You're a failure. And I want that. It isn't Because if you don't admit you're a failure, then you'll create every excuse admit, in the book. I Blame you yourself. You're not going to sit here and look at my face in my place and call me a failure. I just didn't. I'll do it again. You're a failure. Steve is one of the owners. He's supposed to manage this business day to day, but he doesn't have a clue what even a beverage cost is. He's not really a manager, he's a glorified host. Question, are you lazy or do you not care? It's neither one of those things. Well, you better prove it to me, because I think it's one I of I can them. prove it, I'm not afraid to prove it. I have no problem proving you I'm not a failure. I'm gonna work my ass off to make sure this place turns into something. You too. Right. You I'll... put a half a million dollars into yeah. this place. Think of all the decisions that you made that led you to this place. That should bother you, right? Brad doesn't seem to care. He's in a hole of half a million dollars, but he sits there smiling as if life is good. If I was out of half a million dollars, I'd be pissed. Guys, Turtle Bay is dead. Turtle Bay's not dead. I mean, he thinks he's gonna get rid of this brand that we've worked hard to build. He's gonna have to show me something to make me believe he knows not just the bar industry, he knows New Orleans. After a heated night with Brad and Steve, John meets with the staff to identify any additional issues. Well, welcome. Thanks for coming in here this morning. My name is John Taffer. I have opened, conceived, marketed, or operated more than 800 bars, and I'm going to give you everything I got. I want to really talk for a couple minutes now. Greg, do you make exactly the same drinks and recipes that she does? Well, there's no set recipe list. So the answer is no? Yeah. There is not a set trainer. And as bartenders, we take liberties, but we kind of have a lot of freedom as far as making the drinks. And so I think some consistency there would help a lot. We can't manage our costs that way. But that's why management has to manage. 
Have you made any effort to achieve it at all? Has he trained anybody in this room? I mean, I feel like, I feel like we're working with, with adults here. I'm not a babysitter. You are a babysitter. Welcome to management. I expect them to act like adults when they're at work and do what they're supposed to do. And they expect to be led by somebody who takes them down a path of success. Are they leading you to success? Who the hell's making money? No one. You're the one who's wrong. The crazier thing than not knowing what the, the drink ratio and everything else is, is letting a TV barman come in here and change the bar overnight. First of all, I'm not a TV barman. I've got a 35-year reputation in this business, and there is nobody more respected in our industry than me. And these frickin' cameras don't mean to me. Brad doesn't care, so Steve is on a free-for-all. This place has no controls at all. You now work for me. You guys work for me, too. I'm gonna take this place and I'm gonna change every dynamic of it. If I come in with some chicken cup, you're gonna hear about it. I fought for that turtle and to prove that it was different and we're proud of it. So I'm not gonna get rid of the turtle unless he comes with the wow factor and he better come strong. The cup you have now is a piece of cup. So I'm going up, I'm not going down. So Jeremy, who owns this bar, borrowed $300,000 from his grandfather. When he bought the bar, we put it in his mother's name. She signed for everything. His grandfather's retirement was on the line. Now his mother's house and everything was on the hook for the credit, the liability, the taxes, and everything. So where is he? He's not here. He won't come in this building alone. What? He won't come here. There's something about that bar that you and I have never dealt with before. The staff absolutely believes it. That bar is haunted. Really? Now, I'm not sure I believe it or not, but I want you to see how serious this is to them. Let's see. So there's Jeremy. This is a basically frequency as it cycles through. There's a part in between that's called white noise, and that's where spirits communicate with you. We've heard some, we've heard some stuff through here. How many people are in this bar right now? Spirit. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was doing this, it's not I want you to meet Matt and George, the comedians. How many bars you guys been in? Oh, between us, probably a thousand. Yeah. So you know a good drink, you know a bad drink. Yeah. Absolutely. I want you to go in, try the drinks, check out the bar. We'll report back if there are any terrible drinks. Okay. Or ghosts. Sorry. Look, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, how are you? What are we drinking tonight? Uh, I'm going to have a vodka soda. And for you? Uh, kind of a little for me. We kind of want to hear the ghost story about this place. You're of the school of there is a ghost here. There's some crazy stuff that happens for sure. Could it just be a rowdy drunk who fell asleep here? <laughs> no. Is there an origin story to the ghost? <laughs> what I've been told, the person actually died on the floor. So the origin of it is somebody died at the bar. That's what I've heard, man. And so I've even tried to do my own research. The internet didn't exist. I heard it was like in the 80s. I never believed in it until I witnessed it for myself. Even then, I don't like telling people about it because they look at me like, like you guys are right now. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. This is real to him. Hey, we both want to hear the ghost story about this place. Do you know about it? Like if a certain song comes on the jukebox or if there's a full moon, what different triggers the ghost? It's everything. Different for everybody. Different for everybody, OK. Yeah. I'm scared to talk about it in here. OK. She won't talk about it. She's terrified. Uh, two more. Two more. Kettle and Cran and uh, Kettle and Soda. Kettle and Soda, Kettle and Cran, on the way. What's that, like 63? Three ounces. She's just all over the place. What I'm saying is I took the <laughs> Madam, this is just a glass of booze. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. Topping it up. 
Taking a sip is like doing a shot. Yeah, very irresponsible. Because it leads to overconsumption. And then what happens is they down three ounces in a few minutes. If you broke it into two drinks, as you should, you would have then doubled your profits. Right. Here's a half-open ginger beer and a glass of something. Yep. There's just stuff all over the bar. She should be focused on saving liquor costs, making sure you're pouring right, making sure that you have a comfortable, clean atmosphere. You and I have been here now about an hour. Mm -hmm. You see the owner, Jeremy? Not anywhere. Uh, out of my way. He has no idea the amount of liquor they're giving away. I don't know about you, but I am out of freaking patience. His family's money is on the line. This is freaking absurd. I'm going to go in. I want to talk to Nicole. I want to see what's going on, because I can't watch her overpour and do this anymore. There's always something with me. <laughs> I'm going to go in and find out where this guy is. Get in there. We're cursed. We're cursed. Remind me to not talk to myself anymore. <laughs> Hi. Hi. One second. Sorry. Nice, efficient system you got there. I know. I wish the guy who owned this place was here so we could see how long you're waiting. Thanks for your patience. Hi. How Hi. are you doing? I'm Nicole. I'm John. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. So I understand Jeremy bought this bar like three years ago. Mm -hmm. Where is he? I don't know. Not here. Is he normally here? No. Why? Basically, there's just some weird going on. Was the business doing better when Jeremy was more engaged in it? I think so. We don't like so, to talk about it inside the bar, because the more we talk about it, the more stuff happens. Lena. Lena? Yeah. Yes. Come here. Are you scared to be here at night Absolutely. by yourself? Absolutely. Absolutely. Scared to death. That's a thing. Oh, Jeremy, you're here. John. Nice to meet you. I want to understand this. You bought this bar when? February of 2012. Okay. When you bought the bar, was it making money? Yes. Now? You making money? No. What's wrong in this bar? It's the, the bar's the bar's haunted. So you believe that you're failing here because of a ghost? Because I'm not here. It's just so what do you here. think it's going to do to you? Does it have a gun? Does it have a knife? If this bar closes, your grandfather's out $300,000. What do you want me to do? You have the ultimate excuse, the greatest excuse of all time. It's not my fault. It's the ghost. My grandfather's going to lose $300,000, not because of me, because of the ghost. I'm scared. What do you want me to do? Everything is about you. Not the ghost! So there's Red. He owns the building. He had a tenant who leased a bar from him, and the guy didn't pay rent, so he took the bar back. So now you have yourself a reluctant bar owner. Mm. So he's had it now for five years. He's losing about four or $5,000 a month off-season, making a couple of dollars during season. Mm -hmm. All in all, makes no money. Nothing. We don't get a whole bunch of traffic. We're just rolling with the punches, doing what we can. So there's Emily. She's a bartender. Mm -hmm. We don't have glassware here. That's Scarlett. She's a bartender. Game crowds can get kind of rowdy, and we don't want glassware breaking. And that there is Jess, another bartender. Yeah. The fryer's on? Yeah, I was doing it. I want to check. Did you turn the fryer's on? Yes. Just one. There's Delilah, who tonight is working as a shot girl, but she's also a bartender. I kind of want to see it now. I kind of want to buy you one. <laughs> Are you cooking? Yeah, I can cook. OK. I find it strange. Just a moment ago, these two were screaming at each other. I wonder why they run so hot and cold. So for Rico, I got locals. Gordon Wittenmeyer and Gordon's son. Gordon is a sports writer for the Chicago Sun, so I thought he was the perfect candidate to do recon for us tonight. Hello. Can I get you guys something? Can I get a Long Island this? Hey, Em, you want to yeah. make him a Long Island because you're the best? Absolutely. Guy. Anything for you? Yeah, I got shandy. Yeah. What is that? Can I say what I think it says? What is that? You wouldn't be talking about the hot pussy, would you? 
Oh, Lord oh, Almighty. Too. I've never had it personally. I am allergic to it. Hot pussy show. What the <laughs> is that? It is made of four different types of bourbon, cinnamon, brown sugar, and habanero pepper. You can do that stuff in a college bar where right. you have 21 to 23-year-old customers. You don't do it in a sports bar with a 40-year-old customer in a room. Do you guys not have a burger or anything like that? Only on game days. Can I just get some uh, mac and cheese bites with ranch, please? I'll try the, the dog. Yeah, yeah, dog. Okay. He's touching raw product yeah. with his bare hands. Look at the smoke coming out of the oil. That's the food from the bottom of the fryer burning and coming up. Everything that's been cooked in there, you can taste in that macaroni now. And I don't even want to look at that. Good okay. net. There are flies all over the place. Oh, man. Doesn't it take a little while to just get a hot dog and something to fry up? They're not prepping anything ahead of time, is he? No. This guy has no clue what he's doing. So now he breads the hot dog bun with his hand where the raw product was. No gloves, of course. Oh, hands right into the pickle juice. That whole thing is spoiled now, John. Oh, man. There's no way in hell, John, anything can be served out of there. Guys, here's what I want you to do. Go in, check the bar. Yeah. See if they can make a decent freaking drink. Go in the kitchen and do not let him send out any more food to any customers. Well, I'm gonna check the bar. You go in the kitchen, dude. I don't know what the going on. I got this. Hi. My name is Phil. I'm one of, I'm one of John's experts. Hi. I'm Ryan. I'd shake your hands, but I've watched how you cook tonight, so I don't want to do that if you don't mind. I'm one of John's experts. We've been watching you from the SUV, and I've got to ask would you eat out of this oil? Yeah. You've got to understand that you literally have mold on the side. You have disgusting grease that you're cooking food in. I mean, are you pretty much just like, don't give a level is like right here? Yeah. OK. Every time you clang that on top of that fryer, that grease builds up on the back. And then eventually, this place is going to catch on fire. Mac and cheese bites. Enjoy. There's Ed. You have the staff back here. And I asked them what the recipes are for a Long Island iced tea. We have no consistency with this. I made a fishbowl right here. This isn't something that's going to bring people into your bar. That if I have five of my buddies sitting here and we're ordering a fishbowl, well, you want to have a nice romantic fishbowl with me? I don't drink. That's a lie. What? That's a lie. The point here, you don't just put together some stupid little fishbowl like that and not even have a recipe for it. You guys all work together, and you can't make a same drink standing side by side. But it's not, not that recipe simple. For it. It's not that simple, Ed. The smartest people have people in place that know exactly what they need to be done. In some sense. This guy won't talk to his customers. He won't talk to Phil. Won't talk to Ryan. Let's see if he talks to me. Look at all these bars that are around you upstairs. They're doing a great job. They're packed. You're making excuses for me right now. Ed, tell me, how much money are you losing each year? Each off season, probably 30 to 40,000. 30 to 40,000. You think cleaning it might help a little? Gets cleaned every day. Oh. <laughs> Look at all of these flies up along the railing. Look at all of these. Flies everywhere. Flies breed off of yeast. They breed off of filth. They build nests, and they grow out of your drains. How about the fact that he's in the kitchen cooking food, never washing his hands? Oh, forget it. So he touches raw chicken. Then he touches the handle of the refrigerator. Then he takes the hot dog bun with your raw chicken on it. When you hear that, do you want to come back here? No, I ain't coming back here. You want to drink that right no, now? I'm done with it. Does anybody want to drink this? Uh, of course not. Anybody want to drink this? Of course not. Who wants to eat this? Do you want to eat it, Ed? Sure. Sure, you'll eat it. Your hands are all over it anyway. Ryan, throw out the food in that kitchen. Shut it down. No problem, John. Do Nobody right eats now. anything in this place. Look at this place. Is your house all? Not at all. This bar is shameful. For four years, you've been failing. The greatest ballpark in the world is across the street from here. This should be a place of respect. Is this the pride of Chicago? I am going to make you responsible, no matter how embarrassing it is. What bull this is. Let's get out of here, guys. Good job on a Chicago pride, Ed. Thank <laughs> you.
if I care about the bar. I'm glad someone's throwing it in Ned's face because he needs to hear it because he's heard it from everyone else and it hasn't changed a thing. The food's awesome. No, it's not awesome. He threw out completely good foods. What did he graduate? Ronald McDonald's cooking school or something? It's a kitchen. It's got grease. Perfectly good mushrooms. Oh, better not have thrown out my freaking lobster dip. Perfectly good food they threw out, man. Hello. 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 Let me get those out of your way. So I see we're not alone. Yeah. We're not. How long we've had fries, eh? Off and on. All it takes is one night. Don't clean up the bar proper way. The next day, you pay for it. Whose fault is that? Bartenders for not doing it. Uh, so it's their fault. Isn't it yours as the owner? It's your bar. That's everybody's. OK? You're not going to sit here and manage us? Find someone who needs to do it. You don't give a You've been here for two years. I've been here for 15 watching people run this bar. Every person in this building, including your employees, are an inconvenience to you. And it shows. What's the problem? Smiling Ed is the problem. See, does this guy have any emotion at all? Anything that gets a reaction out of you, I'm all for. You, my friend, come off like an ass. The issue is you, Ed. The excuses don't work. The bull doesn't work. I will never respect you. Well, if you don't change. So if I don't want to do this for you, the only reason why I would do it is for them. How do you feel about that? Not happy. Good, because I'm not happy either. Let me bring my experts in, guys. Hi, this is John Taffer. Click here to subscribe to Paramount Network on YouTube for more Bar Rescue.